A very warm welcome to you all. Uh, good afternoon. Goedemiddag, welkom on Omo. Uh, today is um, the 8th of September 2022. And as always, please remember to press the like button, share, subscribe, and press the notification button for our latest videos. I've just had a, a few days cold, so forgive me if uh, here and there I uh, have an interruption that I need to correct with my uh, with uh, with a glass of water. Right, uh, I picked up an article in the Daily Mail uh, called uh, "Democracy That Is in the Decline" and how the number of fully free countries has plunged. Now, if we look at this article, it says in the past ten years. Uh, the, the autocratic forms of government have spread, according to the analysis from uh, our world in data. The number of liberal democracies, defined as democracies with a strong rule of law and equal protection of basic rights, has dropped 19% from 42 to 34 countries a, a decade ago. So democracies uh, is in decline and more autocratic governments are taking shape, as we see in South Africa. Now, the aim today, <clears throat> before I get to what I want to talk about, is I want, you, I want to uh, ask you to draw five columns, so that uh, in each column I will mention something, and then you just plot as I go through uh, how you see things in the country. Uh, so. The first column would obviously be kindness. Uh, we must look at that. Kindness. Second thing is fear. The third column is deception. The fourth column is hope. And the fifth column is decision. Your decision. Once you've evaluated the various things I'm going to talk about today. So make your notes. Now today's topic is uh, called We Are Living a Lie uh, in South Africa. Uh, so I'm going to touch on sport and uh, uh, language, uh, sport culture language, uh, the business and the political public office uh, bearer, uh, bearers, and of course the judicial system. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So if we look at kindness, uh, let's see what it says about kindness. It's the quality of being friendly, generous, considerate. Courteous, uh, decency, goodwill, grace, hospitality, patience, sympathy, tolerance, and putting other people's needs before our own. That's kindness. And let's look at what is fear. Uh, fear is to be afraid of someone or something, or an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or anything harmful. Deception, column three. What is deception? It's the act of causing someone or the audience to accept as true or valid what is actually false or invalid. <coughs> Excuse me. Deception is double dealing, fraud and trickery. Now let's look at hope. Uh, in column four, what is hope? A feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen or occur, a feeling of trust. An example of hope is when a person believes his life's situation will improve. Right, then of course your column five is your decision column, uh, so you do your own homework there. Right, let's look at sport and the language culture we have, and I'm going to look at 1994-95 up to the present uh, uh, day, and again, I'm doing this very, very briefly. Uh, it's up for you. It's for you to. I'm just giving you a guideline. It's for you, at the end of the day, to make that decision. Now, in 1995, I'm going to focus on the sports side now, on our Rugby World Cup that took place, and let's look at those points I've mentioned: kindness, fear, deception, hope. Uh, in 1995, okay, we all watched the third Rugby World Cup on the 24th of June 1995 where Springbok captain Francois Pinar and the South African president then Nelson Mandela held up the World Cup, the William Webb Ellis Trophy 
cup for the world to see how the rainbow nation has come about. Now we can all remember uh, that that uh, rugby world cup where uh, Joel Stransky uh, kicked that drop kick right through the center poles. It was an awesome moment. We all saw it. And it was in line with the Rainbow Nation and everything was, was 100%. Uh, and that was what we all voted for. We voted for that unity back in 1994. Obviously, that, uh, the, uh, the World Cup was hosted and won by South Africa. Uh, and it was the first Rugby World Cup in which every match was held on one, in one country. The World Cup was the first major sporting event to take place in South Africa following the end of apartheid. For South Africa, this wasn't merely winning a major sporting event. This was a, a triumph of peaceful unity. This was a triumph of peaceful unity against apartheid and a triumph of an entire nation succeeding in avoiding the very real threat of civil war. Now, in that period, for a moment, just go back, did you see kindness? Did you see uh, hope? All those nice qualities, of course we did. <clears throat> so in those columns, you can make your respective notes. Now, let's go to today, uh, 2022, 25 plus years later. Uh, and on this sporting field, I want to focus on cricket South Africa. Now, just this year now, we had recent racial matters between the Minister uh, of uh, Sports and Culture and the Cricket uh, South Africa Board and certain individuals like the Cricket Director uh, Graham Smith. Uh, what did we see there? Well, the Social Justice and Nation Building Commissions, the SJN, report made tentative findings that Smith is now Graham Smith, the director of cricket this year, had engaged in prejudicial behavior on three accounts. In an independent arbitration process, and two advocates later cleared him on all these accounts. The arbitration process has also found that Smith, in his position as director of cricket, did not discriminate on the basis of race in appointing voucher. See, this was the witch hunt that took place this year in 2022. Uh, so if you have to compare 1995 rugby with 2022 cricket, with Cricket South Africa and the Minister of Sport, it's day and night. So why did, uh, why did they go after that cricket, cricket board? I would reckon it's because of the bottom line, because it was a healthy business and it needed captured. And this was part of the process. So comparing the two uh, periods, 1995 to today, 2022 in sport, well, you can answer those uh, uh, questions in your own columns that you've drawn up. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at the Afrikaans language that took, uh, the incident took place this year. Uh, there were plans by government to remove the word Afrikaans from the Tal Monuments name in May of this year. Now, hundreds of members uh, clad in DA uniforms paraded and marched uh, to, to highlight their dismay at a proposed name change for the Tal Monument in Paul. And this was built in 1975 to honor the Afrikaans language. Now, in May, this was in May. Now, in June, uh, this year, it, is, it was denied, uh, but the ANC wanted Afrikaans to be removed from universities, as you know, all know, uh, uh, Afri Forum's involvement, and of course we know the situation uh, at, at the Afrikaans schools this year and last year also. So, if you have to look at the sport and the arts and culture, there's been a vast uh, change uh, from 1994-95 to this very day. And I've mentioned before in previous videos that the Voortrekker Wachter uh, is also a target uh, because this thing uh, is against the, the African Union's mission, mission statements. But I've already covered that. But I thought I'd just mention that because it falls under the arts and culture 
sec uh, sec section. Right, uh, under sport, I just want to close off by saying what's interesting about the sport is soccer uh, has never been targeted like the cricket and rugby uh, uh, in the past few years. Now, under the business umbrella, if we look in look at 1994. Now, under the business umbrella, I'm going to focus on employment. In 1994, the unemployment rate stood at 20%, 20.5%. 20 years later, in the first quarter of 2014, the standard rate of unemployment stood at 25%. And again, eight years later, according to the quarterly labor force uh, survey, for the first quarter of 2022, the unemployment rate was 63.9%, that's 64%, for those aged between 15 and 24, and 42.1% for those aged between 25 and 34 years. Now this is your working class, this is according to the article dated the 1st of June this year. So if you're sitting with uh, a population uh, between 15 and 24 ages at 64% unemployed. I mean, this is your workforce that's not in momentum. Nothing can move. Nothing can go forward. Nothing gets done. And of course, you're 42% for the age between 25 and, and, and 34. So basically, from 35 down, nobody's employed. Half the nation is not working. All right, under the business uh, uh, umbrella, I spoke about the employment. Now have a look at the BE codes. We all know uh, that B is just another name for apartheid, uh, it's another name for state capture. Uh, let's see uh, if there's kindness, uh, uh, fear, deception and hope in the BE codes. Right, what uh, is to be noted is the commission uh, led by uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa back in 2000 conducted extensive research and embarked on a wide-ranging consultation and this report provided a framework for BE legislation and an integrated national BE strategy. So, back in 2000, this commission was led by our President Cyril Ramaphosa, and today our economy has collapsed. So, 22 years later, since 2000, we have no economy. In 2003, the South African government introduced the Broad-Based Black Economic uh, Empowerment Act, uh, 53 of 2003, in an attempt to ad address the inequalities suffered by black people and to address and promote the economic participation of black people in, South, in the South African economy. Today, the B is, is about ownership, it's not about participation. And the whole thing has collapsed. We're supposed to address the inequalities suffered by the black people. They're worse off. Today, in 2022, the black people, the South African people, are worse off. Okay, what's important to note here also is that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa was, was also involved in the South African Constitution in 1994. Uh, and obviously we saw the South African Constitution in action during the July 2021 riots, um, which I discussed on the previous video under the oath of office. But I'll talk about that just now. Uh, more on that just now. Okay, if we look at the equity laws, uh, there's an article dated the 23rd of June this year, where the CEE, basically the Commission for Employment Equity, the report uh, it covers the period from the 1st of April last year to the 31st of March this year. And uh, basically, uh, 27 years later, um, with regards to the Employment Equity Act, the inequality still thrives in all South African workplaces. If you look at the uh, EE introduction brief by the minister, uh, you don't see any white faces, it's all black faces. Why is that? The data that uh, emerged from the 2021 EE report uh, portrays an average of 1% in the reduction of white population group. Uh, at the top three occupational levels of the workforce. I mean, that's in the introduction, introduction brief. Everything, everything in this country is about race and it's focused against the whites. I'm mentioning this so that you can see, do you see kindness? Do you see deception? Do you see hope? 
Further, it's mentioned there by the Minister, this sorry state of affairs has prompted the Employment and Labour Minister to say, if we are serious about transformation, we should not be begging now. The time has come to get hard on non-compliance. So this equity uh, um, Employment Equity Act is going to get hard as of this year, 2022. Right, so uh, the measures of success of society will be defined by the extent in which government uh, has been able to uplift the vulnerable in the society. Uplift the vulnerable. The vulnerable need skills, they need taught. You need uh, training centers. So this whole focus is misleading. Okay, then further, uh, it's also mentioned in this uh, EE report, the white population group, al although declining, still continue to dominate uh, at the occupational level of 52%. You see, it's again about white. There's no unity. <clears throat> the racial misalignment repeats itself in the professionally qualified and middle management levels. Now, this is the, this is the scary part that was mentioned in the report. The workplace, they want activists that are critically uh, that are critically needed. So they need people. They need people to make sure these things are, are, are going to happen. Of course, now in the business, we don't need to talk about the tenders and the cadre deployment itself. Explains we know that all the state-owned uh, enterprises are bankrupt, and over 80% of all municipalities. So under the business umbrella, covering employment, BE codes, the equity laws. Total collapse. Right, so, yeah, so if we look at the, the business side, we can wrap up by saying there's, there's no hope. This is the reality. I've just shared with you now the, the uh, unemployment figures for this year is standing at 64% for those ages between 15 and 24, and 42% for, the, for those aged between 25 and 35 years. And this was the article that was mentioned, mentioned now in June of this year. So there's no momentum. There's no, there, there's no energy to carry the workforce and, and the business forward. Right, then uh, our political leaders, uh, public office bearers, and I'm going to include their judiciary system, uh, during the handover of power in 1994 to date. Uh, what happened to the Rainbow Nation picture that was presented, presented in 1994? Following the country's first democratic elections in 1994, Cyril Ramaphosa was elected chairperson of the Constitutional Assembly, which wrote the Savikin New Democratic Constitution. Uh, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa was part of this team in drafting this uh, constitution, uh, pertaining to all duties and responsibilities, uh, and of, of course we, we see that this constitution must protect uh, all citizens and their properties, and this did not happen during the July 2021 riots. Okay, in the same year of 1994 that this constitution was was now drafted uh, and accepted, the ANC joined the African Union, and the African Union's mission statement is to remove all white culture and heritage, and that's why I went back to the Foot Trekker Monument, and I want to quote their mission statement. The African Union mission statement goes or reads as follows to eradicate all forms of colonialism from Africa okay this means uh, white monopoly capital white owned farms white universities white histories languages all covered now in today's brief city names and statues that we've seen uh, and that has happened and has this been done of course yes uh, has there been deception uh, there has been deception. Is there fear to this very day? There's been fear. Is there hope? There is no hope uh, under this political leader umbrella. Now, if we just look at this past week on the Zondo Commission report, uh, on the latest media statement, Zondo, Judge Zondo spoke that Parliament won't or, ca or can't stop state capture. And uh, of course, on the law enforcement agencies, there wasn't enough time to investigate them, uh, whether they acted or did their jobs during the July 2021 riots. But it's in the Constitution. Uh, 
So if it's in the constitution uh, um, where their duties and responsibilities lie, up to ministerial and the South African cabinet levels, why have we spent billions on the Zondu Commission? Think about it. Uh, on News 24, uh, Parliament is concerned about Chief Justice Raymond Zondu's remarks uh, that Parliament might not be able to prevent state capture in the future. I've already mentioned that, but this is just another uh, article. The one was on the YouTube, another was on News 24. Also, this past week, Malema, most recent public appearance, he speaks about the whites must work for them. Why are you working for whites? Why are the blacks working for whites? So you see, there's no unity. I don't see any black politician promoting unity. Don't see any of them. It's all about white monopoly capital, privatization, everything must be nationalized, and they're looking for the socialistic sort of nature. Right, now the ANC leadership was given everything. This is important. The ANC leadership was given everything in 1994. An organized government. An organized and well-run economy. An elite defense force. They were all united. Uh, we were, they were all united back then in 1994 to build that rainbow nation. And what do we have today? Not the picture that, uh, that we, we envisaged back then. Right, so if we have a look at the affirmative action measures uh, that have been taken place over the many years, it is in total contradiction to the Savin Constitution. It promotes racial division and demise in the economy, uh, and of course it's, it's in line with the African Union mission statement. So, you, you can see, you'll, you'll notice now that your, your columns are probably getting now thicker now, and you're, you're getting moving closer towards a decision. Uh, I want to mention here that the, uh, under the judicial system, when the judge Edwin Molalani, uh, we delivered his ruling on the 25th of August this year uh, regarding Kill the Boer, that it is now freedom of uh, speech and it's not hate, hatred, hate crime, uh, shows you just how underdeveloped the legal system in South Africa is. And there, the state president, as per South African constitution, should have immediately intervened and corrected that ruling that the judge has made, and which he did not do. Right, now in the hope column, the last column, column number five, does, South Africa, does the South African politics offer any hope? You've seen how the coalition governments work together um, of late, the fighting in, 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 the, in the municipalities. So is the hope in the saving politics, yes or no? Is there hope in the saving business? Yes or no? Is there hope in the saving sport? Yes or no? And is there hope in our saving defense force, state authorities, police services, judicial system? Yes or no? Taking and bearing in mind the July 2021 20, riots, uh, the fact that the Defence Force, which is public knowledge, doesn't have ammunition, there's no fuel, and the serviceability of all the equipment is uh, close to zero. And that is why I'm concluding to say that we are all living in a lie in this country. There is no rainbow nation. Yes, globally there's a mess. One can't go to Europe. It's worse there. It's getting worse there. Uh, America's got the issues, but here in this country, there's two options. One option is to leave, and that's not a good choice, and the other option is to stay and make it work. But to make it work, we're going to need hope. We're going to need to do something. You can't feed something that's working against you. And this is where I'm bringing the hope that we have left to the decision. You need to join, join an organization like us. Start looking after one another. Start employing your own. Give them the opportunities. Government is not working for you, working against you. I've just explained it to you now. That's why you drew those columns. Uh, even on your personal and your business taxes, you should go and see your lawyers. Get the lawyers to write a letter to SARS. 
uh, and to the uh, municipality applicable to say, look, you're not happy with one, two, three, four, five. You're putting your tax money into a uh, trust account in your attorney and you are, 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 are writing a letter of dispute. And until they sort out various issues, that money stays in your attorney's trust account. And that can be done. Right, so hope is with us. Uh, and I have to say this to you. Uh, it's not going to help to leave. The world has got lots of problems. Uh, and especially if your family is big and you have a business and things like that, you're going to need a plan. Life continues as normal. And uh, uh, when the storm comes, then of course, if you're part of us, then you know what to do in, in times of anarchy. Yes, we have a national emergency plan initiative that works uh, and will uh, cater for your needs. And it's worth and seriously worth considering and joining. And please follow the links below. Uh, again, please like, share on all possible platforms, subscribe, press the uh, notification button for our latest videos. Yes, it was good talking to you again. Uh, I do this every two weeks. I can't do it more than that. I've got a business to run. But uh, until later then, stay well, uh, keep safe, uh, stay sharp. Tot ziens in Groeten.